everybody talked about, about the skull cowboy and nobody knew what the skull cowboy was. Now on the internet, you can find the deleted scene and all of that stuff. So I personally think that the way this the script is now and the way the mythology is set up where there isn't it's not overly explained he his soul comes back through the crow he avenges the deaths and then his magic comes from the crow and all that stuff i think that all works the whole skull cowboy thing and coming on and trying to kind of explain everything to him it was in the it was in the script i read the script I want to know what you think. Do you wish the Skull Cowboy was there? Are you glad the way it worked out having it cut? Not necessarily, because uh, you know I'm 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 uh, I'm I'm sad that uh, Michael Berryman didn't get more of a part in the movie. Okay, because they it's like you cast Michael Berryman as the Skull Cowboy, and then you cover his entire head up with makeup. You know, it's like <laughs> what is the point? And his okay. voice would have been altered too, right? Yeah, so then, exactly. yeah, so it's, yeah. Because he had so much gear on his head that when I turn the lines, it's talk like this. <laughs> I know because I rehearsed him. And, 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 uh, uh, overall, though, the only reason that that's there is it's, it's an image from the comic. Okay. And we thought, do we want to get into the idea that if he deviates, from redressing the wrongs that were done to him and his loved right, ones, right, setting the wrong things right. Uh, we wanted a guy who had gone down the same path like a century earlier, right? Except he had made the wrong choice and now he's doomed to be this spectral thing. And it also explained where the crow came from, the right? Bird. Yeah. The bird was a familiar of the Skull Cowboys. But you get to the movie and you don't need any of that. We had shot half of it and we realized we didn't need it. Yeah. So Alex said, I think we're not going to do it. I think it's out. I think it's, I think. And it's a good idea. It's, I, it's, I it's, think it works. It's perfectly valid. There's so many films where there is a mystery or there's this monster, this alien, and they overly explain it. And then you kind of lose the audience. I think there is power in the mysticism. I think yeah. there is power in just letting the audience kind of accept it and figure out for themselves what it is. Because um, I think that even adds a little bit of more mystery around that character. And I think it's brilliant. So I, I, I think it worked, but I could totally understand like, why you would want that cowboy in there so no you've got you've got to it's like writing a script in the first place you've got to write it bad in order to write it good <laughs> okay and it's like that's a path that we experimented with that made it all the way to us shooting footage right there were tons of other things in the script that never even made it that far we it's out it's out it's right. changed you know but that's how the evolution that's how the evolution of a script or at least a good script i hope um, yeah comes about and it's like it's trial and error because you know what you know what a tightrope walk it is just to be making a movie in the first oh place. my god especially if you're working on i don't want to say this wrongly but like a godlike character that can't die i, I when mean, i look at one of the wolverine films where wolverine was like super powered and and he couldn't die and so it was like the worst wolverine movie because it wasn't working. The audience wasn't buying it. And then when they depowered him and like Logan and the other films, now people were worried about him because he could die. And so as I'm well, watching, go ahead. There's, there's no risk. There's no there's, risk. Yeah. It's then like the stakes Superman, are low. Superman's not interesting unless you have kryptonite. Yeah. Because yeah. he just wins all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and so what I I thought was great with the crow is because you have this character, you have, you know, you you have Eric and he can't die. And so you're going, okay, what's gonna happen? So you've got the little girl, you know, she's the stakes, right? But then you you bring in the fact that if you hurt the crow, then that's his power source. And I thought, okay, that is great. So obviously the the comic books weren't done yet. So was this a you invention? Uh did this come out of the blue or did you guys kind of just I would say, um, I think, now I'm starting to sound like Alex in an interview now. It's, I think we invented this for the movie. Okay. Uh, the minute I say that, someone will go back to the comic and say, no, no, here's the thing where if you hurt the bird, you hurt him. Yeah. I'm not 100% certain. 
on okay. that one. But it's but you can tell that we were testing it out in the movie because it is not explained as clearly as it could be. Yeah. It sort of comes and goes. And uh I think that's the that's the that's the mark of us coming up with an irresolute idea, but there was enough enough strength to it uh to persist into the the movie also the fact that unless if he deviates from his agenda the powers go away like that right and it's like that's the other thing that we were really interested in because and 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 he discovers because first of all he didn't ask to come back no and yeah. that's the part that that's one part that really intrigued me it's like he's back sort of against his will but now that he's here you know which is another reason i think that it's more poignant if it's personalized to just that movie and to just Brandon. I don't think you do sequels. I don't think you do remakes as, as well-intentioned as they may have been. I just don't, I, I don't think it's what Alex says. It's like, just don't mess with this one. You know? I th yeah. Yeah. Do not reboot this. And, and, and the, the sequels never hit what you guys are trying to go for and the magic isn't that he that, brought to the role. Isn't that proof that you know going back to that well is not going to work you know how much proof do they need you know apparently they never have enough because they keep talking about redoing it again do they really oh yeah there's been tons of scripts written it's unnecessary it really does hold up um i'll tell you so you got me thinking about it one of my one of the most powerful scenes ah. <laughs> how dare you sir one of the most powerful scenes for for me in that movie was when the the eric busts through the through the window and grabs the mother who's a morphine addict right and he and he and that's the that's the mother of sarah the little girl right and he holds her up to a mirror and he says he says something to her about poison and then the morphine drains from her veins right morphine and, is bad for you oh my gosh that was such a powerful scene that it stuck with me as a kid because i'd never seen anything like that before it was exceptionally powerful so were you guys intending on making a commentary on drugs or anything like that because i mean obviously back when this came out drugs were i mean heroin was a big problem yeah well morphine was a big problem uh and it's and again it derives from the comic because uh it's a you know a similar so that's not, so that's that, from the comic yeah it, it's the sentiment is from the comic because uh uh obar came up with a line that I always had a problem with because it's not grammatical. And it, and, it, and it's like, mother is the name for God on the lips and heart, you know, it, of all children. Basically. Yeah, I didn't understand that either. It's like, it's like it's, it, it, he can say whatever he wants. It's his character. It's just the grammar is screwed up. Yeah. You know, for me. And so I have a problem. But that's, but that's that statement, mother is the name for God. Yeah. Uh, that statement is the heart of that scene. Okay. And everything else was just the way we wrote it and 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 blocking and everything and it's like right. no it's like it, it upset people when we shot it really yeah it's powerful and in visually showing that and then the actress the actor taking that and 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 really working with it and and seeing that way on her face as she's running out is beautiful it's just a powerful scene and i mean there's just like a lot of that stuff you don't expect that from a superhero film right you're not going to see that in yeah. batman yeah you know, yeah. and so, and so you're the, gonna, or or you're going to expect a moment of levity to like to like defang whatever right. dramatic thing that you've just seen. It's a poke in the ribs, right? You know, when you're watching it, yeah. No, you weigh on it. You, you like it's 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 heavy. It sits there for a minute. It's okay. It we works. Don't have, we don't have wacky villains, villains in weird costumes. We have absolute scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and they, they are in weird costumes in their own way. Oh yeah. And we do have comic relief because we have skank. Yeah, so it's, you do. It's, it's you know it, it all sort of fell to him but it's not tongue-in-cheek um and and i think brandon brought that as well so uh, since if you play it straight play it straight it'll take care of itself trust me